Hello and welcome back all my favorite coder cats and coder kittens. As usual, this is Becca going by Netcat or Netcat's Meow most places online. Occasionally gamer self, but that's more just specifically for gaming stuff than it is for all of my regular identifying things. Here again, as usual, to talk to you about Linden scripting language. Now, I was kind of fishing around for an idea of what to cover after that bit about the lights, and I came up with an idea. Just, uh, I may go back to the lights to show how to, to send a few more parameters through, but just had a bit of another idea. You see, a big chunk of what I do in SL personally is I do roleplay stuff. Um, right now I'm involved in a Final Fantasy based one. But you can do a lot of different types of gaming. A lot of different types of gaming that some of them involve dice. Now, if you go and get tables pre-made for games, they'll usually have all the randomizing elements built in. But if you want to just pick up and go with something, you might want to know how to just create dice on the fly. So, I decided to go ahead and cover that. This little thing here is what I was working on. Since it's physical, I can drag it around all I want to. If I hold control and drag it, I can drag it vertically as well. And if I let go, physics does its thing, and it even updates its detection of what number it's rolled. So, I'm actually going to cover how do you make this. And when I get to the guts of how it detects its actual number, this one, I will admit, I went to look it up. I actually found a very smart person on the Second Life community forum going by Void Singer that had actually worked out how to do this. So when I get into those internal guts, credit to Void Singer, you know, thank you for it. You actually knew about one function I didn't know about and had cleverly figured out a way to do something I was scratching my head about. That's one of the things you'll learn as a programmer. Not every, you don't always have to have every great idea. You just have to know where to find them. Looking up in forums and looking at past work of others is a great way to figure out how to do something if you're scratching your head on it. But before we get onto all of that, how do we get this dice properly textured? Well, the easy way would be to have a different texture for each face, but that chews up memory, that creates other issues, and solving all of those gave me something to teach you this week. That is the texture that's on there. It's every single face on one big texture. How do I do it? With a script, of course. Your basic Mark 1 cube, the D6 texture setup, plunk that in there. It just went through, assigned each face a number, and then shrunk the dice down to size. So, we're gonna have a quick look here. It's actually a relatively simple bit of code. And I will go ahead and make that texture available as a freebie for download, no problem. This script though, you're gonna have to pay attention and learn how to write it yourself. So I start with a key that I labeled dice. That is the actual key for that texture. Because I set this texture to full permission. I think it would work even if I don't do that, but just to be sure I set it full permission. And I used copy asset UUID. Plug that right in there. The float scale, that's just how the dice gets sized to its appropriate size. You can set that to anything you want. That's just where I set it. But everything is set primitive parameters. Every time that we deal with set primitive parameters, I go through and pull up the wiki on that because set primitive parameters can do an amazingly wide range of things. So you always want to go through and find the specific setting you want. So we'd come down. Pretty sure it's one of these set target. Uh, 
There it is. You get all of these options. Control C. So, when you're telling it to set texture, you get first integer face. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Remember, in cases of a computer, the first entry is always a 0. People think of it as entry number 1. A computer thinks of it as entry 0. The texture, if you put the texture in the object, you can call it by name. Since I didn't put the texture in the object, I called it by a string. I'm sorry, not by string. Eh, silly. I called it by key. Then vector repeats, vector offset, float rotation, and radians. These are the ones that get interesting. Now, going through and doing that by hand and just guesstimating it, really difficult. So what I do for setting that up is I got one face exactly where I wanted it, and then I looked at these. In order to get the vector for repeats, that is actually a horizontal and vertical scale. Vectors have three values. Your positioning on a two-dimensional face, like the face of an object, only has two values. LSL, the programming language, will ignore the third value. You can set that third value to anything. It does not matter. It only pays attention to the first two values. Storing it as a vector was just an easy way to make it one single argument instead of having to have two arguments. Repeats per meter is something that is created from these. You can adjust it manually, but for this purpose, you can just ignore it. Rotation, that is to rotate the texture like so. Again, you can set the texture where you want it and then just get these values off of here directly. Then the offset, horizontal offset, I played around with until I got it centered. Vertical offset was completely unimportant since if you look back at the texture, vertically it's all one, bit, one part there. So, that's where you get the face, which face you're going to change, the texture, stored as a key, vector repeats, right here. After I figured out 1.17, that let me center in on one specific part of that, everything after that was determining its offset. Again, the third value on both of these is ignored because it's not important. And then rotation, I didn't need rotation. So that is basically how you do that. You can actually go through and redefine the texturing of an entire object. Anytime you get a thing that has different texturing options that you pick from a menu and it redoes it, it's using that or it's using a much simpler command. There is a much simpler command. Set texture. And actually, since those are all set right now, it would work out just the same. So we're going to try a new cube. a new cube. The simpler way to do it is with set texture Just remember the order of the arguments here. Or 
remember, LSL Wiki is your friend. Friend to all programmers. Save that. That will only use the offsets and positioning that are already present. So if you have something that's just changing its own textures, it probably uses the much simpler set texture. But if you want to be able to set things much more specifically and much more controlled, you can use set primitive parameters. So next week, we're going to dive into Void Singer's work and actually look into how I got all of the, it to identify its digits through that bit of code. We're going to go over that one next week. And then we'll be able to link them together and create a simple dicing game where the dice will actually communicate to a central object what they're rolling at and you can actually just use that same HUD to click to roll them. And you'll be able to set how many dice you want to roll. So that'll give you a nice little basic way of doing dice for any type of game you want that use actual LSL, actual SL physics to roll them. So figured that'd be a nice little thing to play around with. So for those that were following the real life drama, um, talk to the law office on Thursday. They are not the kind that will take out of the estate or they don't think that my odds are that good without getting certain paperwork and I didn't have $2,500 to pay them up front. But they did have some advice on how to shake the tree of a place that supposedly has some of the relevant stuff, like a trust and a, a at least a copy of the will. So we are... I am trying to shake their tree with the advice that was given. It's at least an avenue to follow. I've got two weeks left on the rental here. If anybody from the community wants to kick a little bit towards keeping this little sim alive, um, that'd be great. If not, I'm looking at somewhere to move the, the loft to or somebody that will let me film out of their, their virtual land for a while until I get everything squared away again. But yeah, that's where it stands. Um, I'm scraping by, but I'm still alive. So fingers crossed. Any uh, positive energies y'all can give are going to be greatly appreciated. Uh, but that'll be it for this week. Um, there will be a link to the dice texture in the description. There will, not this week's, but next week's, I will probably make the script to set up, up available so that you don't have to jump through all of this yourself. Um, I got all of the numbers that I used in the script by just literally manually tweaking it until I found it and then just plugging those numbers in. Um, so it's perfectly feasible to do that yourself. Um, but yeah, that will be that for this week. As usual, good day, good luck, happy scripting. Do not forget the links to the Discord or to the playlist for this or my other series, Coder Kitty Decoded, where I break down the specific syntax and arguments of LSL commands for your quick reference. Thank you all for the support I get. Uh, those of you who comment in the on the videos or post in the Discord, believe me, it keeps me going. Thank you all. Please be well. Love ya. Couldn't do this without ya. Wouldn't be a point in doing this without you, but I really wouldn't be able to keep going anyway without you all. So thank you. Please be well. Bye-bye and meow.